Good evening, Comrade Rajan Nagar, my good mentor, Comrade Venkatacharam sir, and my dear friends. It gives me happiness to share from the heart. Last two years, two things have become important. One is COVID, which tested on our lives. The other one is livelihood, which tested on our living itself. We call frontline people in COVID handling the doctors, paramedics, and nurses, and whatever. And in the case of saving the livelihood, the front lines were the banking community. Hats off to you. You all go unnoticed. You all have been doing a thankless job. And this is my time. On behalf of all the entrepreneurs in this country, salute you. Thank you and fall at your feet for all the services which you have been rendering in spite of risking your own lives. I am so happy to be amongst you. Everyone goes through the problems. It's not easy. Today, every individual, barring the few uh, top-level corporate giants and things like that, uh, accepting them whose wealth has been increasing exponentially most of the other common men in this country have been going through the troubled times either they have lost their savings or they have lost their near and dear or both most of the people have lost their jobs most of their employees have employers have lost their enterprises It's a very crucial phase which all of us are going through. We can't say we have gone through. We are unable to say what will be in future for us in the coming days to come. But unless we hold our hands together, unless we stay together, we will not be able to save ourselves. With all the thanks and gratefulness, I would like to few present to you the views of an entrepreneur in India. Today he may be micro, tomorrow he would become small, then day after tomorrow he may become medium. So I look for a positiveness in an entrepreneur. I came out of the college, became an entrepreneur, and I know what it needs to be an entrepreneur. We never take an answer no. We never say die. If an employee loses a job or doesn't like a job, he can shift to another company or another job or another profession. Where will an entrepreneur go? He can only be on his own feet. He can only do business. If, he, if his one business is not doing, he has to come back and do the next business. He has to be was an Vikramadita. A never say die attitude. A man who can never cry openly. A man who can never say his problems are gelu. A man who always wears a mask, whether it is COVID times or no COVID times, he is always used to wearing a mask of a smile. His face, if it becomes dull, his family cannot take it. His face, if it becomes dull, his co-working staff cannot take it. If his face becomes dull, no material will come into his factory. He is an artificially mask-wearing entrepreneur. This country can boost off several racks to richer stories. Entrepreneurs from one man show to building an empire. What has been happening? I am not a politician. I am not a critic. My blood runs for entrepreneurs. I would like to use this opportunity 
to express what the entrepreneur feels in this country today what the entrepreneur wants from others i would like to be the voice of the voiceless voice of the voiceless of the painful people my friends we all started with demonetization that was a first heart attack which was given to naive entrepreneurs you know when i say naive entrepreneurs an entrepreneur who are doing business based on trust not based on documents and papers and invoicing and professionalism they were they were just doing business with the native mechanisms you and i have seen our four generations before the trading was done by putting a towel in the hands and then catching the fingers and framing the price people were accepting doing businesses we grew with bartering we grew with trust we grew with faith we grew with believing people slowly the belief has taken a back seat the trust deficit has stepped in entrepreneurs are being looked at as a crooks entrepreneurs are being seen as a money maker entrepreneurs are being seen as a wealth creator not the nation builders how it happens how it is going like this not easy right cannot take it like this if each one of you in your family if your son or a daughter comes to you and says that we they would like to stand on their own legs the first parental feel is oh my god they will suffer if they stand on their feet why do you want to take a roller coaster drive in your life why don't you get employed and lead a five day a working life and a cushy salary and a troubleless life why do you want to go through all this not easy but what to do entrepreneurs are born entrepreneurs can only create enterprises entrepreneurs can only look positive entrepreneur can only smile at all occasions to the extent where he has even forgotten what is original what is mask even that fellow was tested when the demonetization came i did a survey at the end of the demonetization phase i did a survey from all india manufacturers organization i said 65% revenue loss 35% job loss that was a caption in national dailies it was even quoted in the parliament that was a first backed up with a field report which was tabled we thought we will recover till december 2017 we were facing then we started climbing up then the january february march went off april may june we started limping came the next heart attack gst the largest stakeholder was never consulted the largest user of that the trading the manufacturing the entrepreneurial community was not given an opportunity to test drive it. and we were just pushed you can push an entrepreneur into a swimming pool you can push him into a well you pushed him into a niagara falls to the best of his ability he tried surfacing at least keeping his nose above the water he tried his best survived few survived few could survive doesn't matter no problem that's how the entrepreneurial life is so we moved then we what we had the third shock economy slowed down the micro enterprises the small scale entrepreneurs a one man show driven one leadership driven organizations they all had the problem because they were only dependent on two sectors major one was 
the real estate. The second was an auto ancillary units. Both of them lost. People were suffocating. Unfortunately, a person living at the 25th floor rooftop will not be able to see parrots flying. He can only see eagles flying. We were parrots. Our struggle pains were not seen by the visibility of people standing at 25th floor. We were small minuscules. MSME was a word which was used as a pet subject to talk. I have been hearing the MSME contribution as 30% to the GDP, X percentage of employment for the last, I think, a decade. We don't have any data. We have no statistics to say which sector has how many. We changed the goalposts. I mean the reclassification of the MSM. In 2017, we delinked somebody from being an MSME, which was trader community. In 2021, we call it as a celebration in bringing them back as an MSME. What was the reason to delete them? What was the reason to bring them back? Is it a celebration? God knows. We reclassified the word MSME. Suddenly, out of 6.3 crores of MSME, which is what the data says, there is no proof that says that. There is no backed up record that says that. The Udayam registrations, the various registrations, Uddhu Adar, does not total that, does not give us any information about that. We talk about 11 crores of employments. We don't see more than four and a half to five crores in the EPFO blackets. So we say they are all uh, informal people. What is informal? We don't have a data on migrant labor. We don't have a data on informal sector. We don't have a data on intra-migrant. We have no data anywhere. How can a doctor write a prescription if you don't have a scanning report? But finally, the COVID hit us last year. The whole clock was brought into a stoppage. All the stimulus so far, which we have received, can only be routed through the banker. In other words, our biggest relief is you. All of you in this room, which is listening, who are listening, are the people who are going to be administering the frontline warriors of saving entrepreneurs from the setback of the COVID. But at least were you happy? Not at all. I have seen hundreds of the bank managers who are in contact with the customers with tears. They are compelled to take action on an entrepreneur when they know that genuinely the entrepreneur was the best. Just because the records were not satisfied. I know several, several banking friends of mine who come and openly cry, saying how helpless they are because they are not robots. They are humans first. They know the family of the account holder. They know the person. They know the past. They know the dedication. They know the devotion. On one side, somebody from 4,500 crore outstanding gets only 450 crore and five walks away. Whereas on the other side, a genuine entrepreneur in his front is his life has to be recovered for 25 lakhs with all the other attachments to it by shifting him from his house and throwing him on the roads with a position notice and with an auction sale notice. Very painful people I have seen from the banking sector. They all have been saying the rules are not permitting. Decisions were made elsewhere. Beneficiary did not get what they wanted. The executor, which are bankers, are not happy. Then what is that stimulus we call it as? Stimulus for whom? Relief for whom? These are question marks. 
These are all matters of concerns, my friends. None of us, none of us will be happy in our life. I'm 62 today. I wouldn't be happy to see my children if they are jobless at any age of theirs. I wouldn't be happy to see my son or a daughter if they are an entrepreneur painfully struggling, not knowing what to do every day. What answer do we give to these generations? Whom have we recognized? Whom have we looked upon? We offer five-year PLIs. We offer foreigners to come and set up industries into this country. Where are the entrepreneurs of this country? Where is the technical background, the backbone, the brain, the knowledge of this world? which lies in India. What is Atmanirbhar? Can Atmanirbhar be born overnight? Slogans are fine. Naming and uh, faming is fine. But end of the day, you also need action on the field. You know it. I know it. The policy makers know it. The ECLGS scheme was probably extended only to about 40 lakhs of MSMEs out of 6.3 crores of MSMEs, which is not even 8%. What about the balance, 92%? What about the people who never had a loan so far? What about the people who had startup enterprises, dreams? What about the entrepreneurs who would like to plan their future but could not plan anything? What did we do for them? How did we wipe their tears? How did we put them on our shoulders? How did we take care of them with the comforts? Raw material prices are not controlled. Steel prices have gone up by 45%, 50%. Cement <clears throat> prices have gone up. Plastic has gone up by 120%. All corporate balance sheet which you and I see are posting huge profits. On one side, we talk about privatization. On the other side, public sector units are posting huge profits. Why do you privatize when you are there doing so well? God knows why. Whereas entrepreneurs suffering, suffocating, painful. They don't know where to go. Micro, small enterprises are really finding in this country caught up and landed into a coma stage. It's not a very easy words I'm using here. I'm very careful in choosing my words when I speak to all of you. The audience is not a small audience. When I say entrepreneurs are in coma stage, I say it with blood shedding in my heart. Any relief? There are no solutions. There are solutions. For every problem, there is a solution, provided we accept it as a problem. When we have decided to take on five and a half lakhs of crores of bank shaving of corporate loans in this country, what is big, what is small? It's only the attitudes. Gold loans are swelling on one side. Who can be the real savior for all this? And nationalized to bankers. Why nationalized to bank? The nationalized banks are born not just with profit in motive, but with several other attitudes as a seeds of that birth. They just don't see only the balance sheet numbers. Balance sheet numbers are visible. But invisible creations are plenty. 
even that banking system if you are privatizing what does it mean it's just bringing in some softwares and uh, linking some softwares and online banking and mobile app banking is it what is called as a digitalization no no the nationalized bank is a banks which even today a common man's heart lies i have my father never had an account anything other than just one bank in his entire life today an individual has six banks accounts or six credit cards in their hands why because they take loan on each and every credit card to survive their lives how will they repay the word stress is used today by a 3 year old child the word stress management is taught at lkg school level whereas those like me about 60 would have never used the word stress in our entire life we would have not even known what is stress because we have only always seen smile in our face problems are there but not stress today stress unbearable tension pressure relief valves relaxation going out partying having loans having defaults has become common most just like an engineering student having an arrears today having an arrear has become a status symbol but how long brother how long friends where is our human touch is going brother how are we going to start brother you as a banker who is known well known with your numbers you know pretty well the borrower has been put in his house for the last 18 months for various reasons of the other than his and by giving him another 20% loan in his head won't you know a honest borrower will never be able to sleep with the dues are not paid today people have no income we all thought moratorium will come but what came was loan restructuring the word emergency today has a different connotation you know there used to be all in movies the police comes as a last after all the crime scene and after all the things happen the police comes as a last it is like that today the relief comes as a last point not when you want it justice delayed is justice denied we have witnessed a old man dying yesterday where are we going i in my life denied several opportunities of settling in abroad because i wanted to be an indian i wanted to live in india i wanted to build my life in india and i know how difficult it is to go through the life but we always used to enjoy being in india because if i am struggling i will have five people around me to help me out but today all the five are struggling we are not able to create money in the market we are not able to see circulation in the market we are not able to get things like this in the market there used to be times you know when my bank finance was exhausted but suddenly an order comes i'll call my supplier and tell him brother i got one order can you send me some materials on credit without any questions the material will come credibility was speaking today civil scores are speaking civil score nobody knows nobody can correct what is right what is that right for shaving of the money did we see the civil score and gave nothing today we are insisting we identified 52 sectors 
which have become difficult to survive in the last 16 months. I can list the 52 sectors. Anything special has been done for them? Any, any other innovative thinking other than just giving loan? Any other innovative thinking of finding a solution to the problem? We keep talking, we keep saying. You know, we used to see to make a line look small and draw a bigger line next to it if you can't erase it. That's exactly what we are doing. To make the pains of demonetization go away, draw GST next to it. To make the pains of GST go away, draw the economy solar out next to it. To make the economy slow down pain go away, shut everybody inside from 24th of March. To make the pains of being put into the house go away, have the second wave so that the people run around for the oxygen and the medical beds and the cremation grounds. To make that look smaller today, the entrepreneurs have become beggars. Beggars standing at the banker's hand, pleading loans, or pleading relief of time, or pleading restructuring, or pleading saving them with a one-time settlement. Is a banker at the bank able to do it? He wants to do it, but he is unable to do it. How miserable those two will be when they are inside the room with a cup of coffee over, sharing their each other's problems. We used to say, if you have happiness, if I have happiness, if we share, both of us become with true happiness when we walk out as a friends. Today, I share my sorrow to you. You share your sorrow to me. I feel I am better off after listening to you. You feel you are better off after listening to me. We come out of the room, still smiling. My friends, solutions are needed. Yes, entrepreneur needs a longer rope. In spite of 16 months setbacks, let me tell you, the GST collection has been on the upswing, so government is not suffering. Their tax revenues have not shrunk. They are not suffering. They only gave us time to pay, but they took every one of our money back to them with the interest. Sometimes even interest on interest. So. The other side is not, I have not lost. The losers are the entrepreneurs. The losers are the employees. There may be some section of people who might have got better salary even after this period. They might have been looked after by their companies well because they never had the sufferings. I am not saying no to it. Our recent survey from the Consortium of Indian Association with over 81,000 people participating says 88% of the people have not availed any benefit from the government in the last two years. Nearly 70% of the people have not posted profit for the previous year. Your rule book says, if I have not posted profit, then you will have to regularize my account. Because I gave you projection. I said I will do this, I will do that, and then I have borrowed the money. Now, if I don't do that, it automatically triggers me into a warning account. Instead of helping me to come out, you have already categorized me as a warning fellow. Instead of giving me a helping hand to come out of the pit, I have been pushed down further. 
all of you know borewell time a small kid falls into the borewell rescue operation starts people work day and night originally the kid is at 10 feet high they dig on the side a bigger hole try to reach suddenly the kid slips to 25 feet that is the fate of an entrepreneur we understand we fell we understand we went through the troubled times not just because of our problems but what relief and finally when you recover the body it is only a dead body how painful i salute you for feeling empathy the word empathy is missing today empathy is understanding the sufferings of the other person genuinely empathy comes only when you feel the other man's shoes i am talking to the people here in my opinion who have that word empathy in them i am trying to express what our pains in the shoes of an entrepreneur is today we have labor problems manpower is not available migrant laborers have gone we have on one side orders but labor is not there if i have order and if i have labor materials are not there if i have order if i have labor if i have materials cash flow money is not there if i have all the four profit is not there if i have all that government comes and takes away all the money in the name of my backlog of people then why do i work what for i work where is my goal post i play hard go near the goal post suddenly the goal post gets shifted reference point gets shifted all tall 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 talks are coming to my ears everybody is doing well everybody nation is rebuilding our chief economic officer has said the second covid wave is not as bad on the economy as it was on the first we are surprised we are shocked we are taken aback if i have a stomach pain i go to a doctor and if the doctor instead of attending to my stomach pain if he says you are acting there is no pain for you how much of agony you will have that is what i said empathy empathy is not vote back empathy does not come with only elections in a states coming up empathy comes 24 by 7 each one of us have had our own maids in the house who have moved we have picked after because of the empathy during the last 16 years 16 months whether we could afford whether we could not afford i know of hundreds and thousands of people who had rented out and they had foregone their rents from the tenant because they could not afford paying them the money good people live in this world survival is of the fittest i agree but the fittest is not always fittest by muscle power the fittest is with the mind power this is what i felt feel empathy today don't ask for a project report or a projection from anybody because nobody can give you projections even if i give you projection i'm just cheating you by giving you projection the government could not say what will be the projection of covid numbers 3 months back you and i cannot say what will be the projection of covid one month from now when the whole world whole sphere is not projectable why should a businessman alone should do the projection cross step by step please recognize honest people 
please recognize honest entrepreneurs please recognize entrepreneurs have nowhere else to go nowhere else to go where will he go tell me a poor fellow who has put his saving after reaching the age of 30 he has put his savings purchased one car with big 25% margin 75% with the loan attached himself with ola or uber earning some 30000 rupees a month suddenly was asked to park his car and stay in the car in 16 months he not only lost his earning he was not given even a relief on the emi forget the emi he was not even given relief on the interest of the emi forget that without his car running on the road his insurance cover got over he has to take another insurance for his car by paying huge money even that is acceptable but on that 18% gst that is bad you understood what i mean a poor fellow who has no earnings for the last 18 months or 16 months a poor fellow even if he earns next once everything starts up again already he is working 16 18 hours a day and he can only earn that how can he repay all that wiped out losses in his life vehicle maintenance did we feel empathy with him we have not felt that empathy did we care for such people who who have whom we have seen i can show you hundreds of people who had set up training center you know the the gyms by capital investment buying the assets and having yearly memberships they lost the memberships the capital is lying there they could not run their gym they lost their whole projection machine life is gone machine warranty is gone machine is unused restarting is a problem where will they go do you give them stimulus of 20% loan and you give them guarantee on that loan and also on the side take modt cover and you give them interest on interest how you expect him to be smiling the word empathy is missing the touch is missing yesterday traders got added to the micro industries already the food for 6 crore people is, we make food for 5 people but we invite 25 people to come to our house to eat and we expect everybody will be happy how is it possible whom are we trying to please whom are we trying to say that we are doing something which will change their life it's a very painful generations we are witnessing i know of many people of my age who have left business now because they could afford it saying hereafter i cannot run let me wind up and let me close the loans and let me not pass on legacy of outstandings to my people but what about the people who are at 30s what about the people who are with the dreams of startup enterprises what about the people who are at 40s what about the people who are at 50s where all their earnings have gone in only hospitalization of their parents in the corona time or what about a woman who lost his heart lost her husband in corona time we are talking about retirement savings fixed and deposit interest coming to yesterday we received rbi notification saying if the fd is not automatically renewed there is no auto renewal here after if it is time is over then charge them more what is happening today atm is not being used to by customers today atms are used by crooks 32 pelos 32 atms are robbed today atms have become vulnerable for easiness of usage by crooks today the data leakage is everywhere covin site has been taken off by everybody the data is available where is the safety where is the network safety where is the data safety and today the statistics says 
22% of the schools in the whole country is only wired in terms of internet. But we talk about online education for the last 16 months. Then what education those kids would have received? On the other side, we talk about reform in the name of education. Everything is reformed. Reform towards perform or reform towards perishment. Think. I can, I can, my voice can be silenced. I can live quiet. I am not able to withstand the sufferings of the people. I am sure each one of you feel that. Let's remain human. Let's exhibit human touch. Let's help each other. Every entrepreneur today in this country needs a supportive hand. Every businessman, employer needs a care, which is what is needed today. And you are for us the God. I mean it. For all the entrepreneurs, the bankers are the God. That's why we are against privatizing the God. God remains a worshipping idol when it is not privatized. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the time. I am within my schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Raghunathan. Wonderful. You did not speak from your mouth. You spoke from your heart. And uh, we fully share the concerns, the anxiety with which you spoke. And we are fully with you from the All India Bank Employees Association. In fact, that is one of the reasons that we are opposing privatization. Because the privatized banks will only cater to the big people. But uh, India does not belong to the big people. India does not depend on the big people only. India depends on the common people, ordinary people, and uh, people like you. And uh, only the nationalized banks can stand with you. So we can assure you that in our campaign, in our struggle, this will be one of the prominent agenda and demand that you must give real support and help to the MSM. Not limb sympathy, not all these cosmetics. What is really required is what you spoke. We shall definitely pursue and we will fully support all your demands. Your demands will be our demands in the struggle of the bank employees of the All India Bank Employees Association, I can assure you. And whenever you want any time, anything from our side, we are there with you. All India Bank Employees Association is with you. I thank you. Now, I formally request Comrade Srinivasan, our coordinator, to propose a word of thanks. In Raghunathan, it was, uh, as Comrade C.H. Venkatsalam has said, it was a very inspiring and uh, very emotionally surcharged uh, lecture that you have uh, given about uh, the today's position of uh, MSMEs. And uh, in fact, I was going through the MSMEs uh, sector. And uh, when I said 11 crore people or 111 million people were employed and 63 crore uh, MSME units are there, but uh, it is a government data, but uh, you said there was no tangible data available. Probably it will be more. Okay, our uh, economic chief economic advisor might have said it did not have the second wave, did not have the economic uh, effect as uh, the first wave. But in the first wave, our economy was uh, stopped in rural India in that the MSMEs, over 51% there in the agricultural and non-agricultural sector of MSME have played their role in slipping of the GDP, stopping the slippage of GDP beyond 24%. Our kudos to you. 
as comrade C. H. Venkatachalam has said, All India Bank Employees Association will be with you. And when we are fighting against the privatization of public sector banks, we seek your support and support of all the 111 million uh, people employed in MSMEs because MSMEs can be encouraged only through nationalized banks. And as you said, in these uh, times, only corporates have been given a uh, leeway and write-offs and we support the MSMEs. We also request you to reciprocate us in the fight against privatization of public sector banks. We thank you, sir. We thank all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks to every one of you. Thank, thank you. you very much. And announcement is that tomorrow uh, we'll have our next uh, webinar. And tomorrow also will be a very important uh, speaker. Uh, is Dr. Professor Arun Kumar, a former JNU, is a very well-known economist and social scientist. And particularly after demonetization and GST, his book on black economy is well famous. We all know that. And he's also uh, very close to the All India Bank Enterprise Association. And tomorrow he will be the speaker. And his lectures also will be very analytical, very uh, educative to all of us. So while thanking again, uh, Mr. Raghunathan for his wonderful, uh, wonderful, uh, very, very, very inspiring and uh, motivating speech to us. And I request everybody that tomorrow also let us assemble more in number and uh, make tomorrow's program also a grand success. With this, with the permission of our president, Kamri Rajan Nagar, we are coming to the close of today's meeting. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very kind of you to everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you, sir.